Pagani Utopia, Ferrari 812 Competizione, and Porsche 963. These three cars are the newest additions to the LEGO Speed Champions lineup and they look absolutely stunning. To get the video review going, I'll start with the Pagani Utopia. The mostly dark grey color scheme is to me the least interesting of them all. Comparing this model to the real car, you'll recognize a lot of the shapes the LEGO model is trying to replicate, to great effect, taking advantage of some very clever part usage. Let's take the example of the front of the car, where this detail here was done with plates with clips stacked on top of each other, or the headlights here done with minifigure ice skating elements. On the back, these shapes were achieved with four car door elements on their sides. You're probably noticing that this whole section is tilted, which is true, and goes to show the craftsmanship that goes into designing these models. To get it like this, you'll have to build this weird bundle of pieces that later on will be clipped on the supercar. It has a big of a wiggle room though, which was a bit unfortunate as it isn't super clear where the build should exactly be staying, and could also move during play. Towards the front, the other highlight of the building techniques of this set is the way this section is built upside down, clipped onto the car and locked with these fairly recent curved slopes and the hood assembly just clips and tilts into place. The windscreen piece feels new to me and is printed, lifting it will reveal the supercar's interior, very simple looking but with a perfect color choice for the finishings, actually making it look like leather. This is where the driver with clothing that matches the brand of the car, judging by the logo there, will sit comfortably wearing the included helmet for extra safety. The dashboard detail is a sticker and on that note, to my surprise, this set had a very low quantity of them, just 8 in total when compared to the 22 or 34 stickers of the sets I'm reviewing in a moment. There's also these ones for air intakes, the filler cap and these on the hood. As previously mentioned, the windscreen is printed and so are these curved slopes with the car's headlights, this hardly noticeable 1x6 plate down here and two more on the back. Another surprising thing about this model is some of the new elements it contains. If you get the Pagani, you'll open the box and think if this is even a LEGO set. The 1x5 plates still weird me out, the C plates are these 1x1s that I'm still unsure if they're bricks or plates. Then there's a rounded corner plate, this weird rounded 1x2 tile, a rounded 1x3 plate with holes, a crazy new modified brick element and these 2x5 wedges that made the shapes behind the windscreen of the car possible. All of the prints and new elements are the reason why the set price per piece ratio is exactly 10 cents per piece, with 249 pieces for a price of $24.99, whereas in the next two cars that ratio is slightly better. The Porsche 963 is a sports prototype race car and therefore has an unusual body frame all around that at least I, not being a car guy, am not as familiar with. The real car has a lot more rounded shaping than what the LEGO design team has managed to achieve, so in that regard I would say it isn't as accurate to the real thing as the Pagani. The build was a lot more simple without any crazy building techniques, so in that sense it was a bit underwhelming for the newfound expectations I have for the theme. The back, however, and how these details and lights were squeezed inside a bunch of wall panel elements was nice. The transition between this new windscreen element I haven't seen before and the wedge slopes in its back was interesting as well, and lifting it reveals the plain looking interior of the car. The driver has clothes that match the car's color scheme and branding, and I did notice that when we place the driver inside, the cockpit doesn't fully close, regardless if he's wearing the airpiece or the helmet, which feels unfortunate and should not happen. We can see the difference when there's no driver inside. Towards the front there's these very glaring gaps that also don't look brilliant. I do understand how hard it is to come up with rounded shapes with LEGO, but still. And let's not forget the sticker usage. It's a common theme with Speed Champions, it helps bringing the cost of LEGO sets down, and I get that, but when we need to place 34 stickers in a relatively small model such as these, feels a bit too much, like these elements here having 3 stickers each, and having to apply about 10 of them on the last few steps of the build made the whole thing very anticlimactic for my taste. 
At 280 pieces for 24.99 is decently priced, but as you might have guessed by now, I wasn't particularly fond of this one. But the Ferrari 812 Competizione brings the review to a positive vibe with lots of the good things LEGO Speed Champion sets have to offer. Great building techniques, nice parts usage and an overall great looking car model. The iconic Ferrari red color scheme is a must, but there's also a few hints of black and the obvious yellow stripe going through the middle of the car from front all the way to the back. This was done with the use of stickers, except for the part on the windscreen element that's printed. The headlights are printed as are the headrests inside the car, giving it a very classy look. Room for two passengers with a middle console sticker inside and the driver is Jang Briggs, living the time of his life. The front of the car looks really good and there's this subtle angle on the hood section achieved with the use of a hinge underneath. The hinging does cause the appearance of this gap here which doesn't look as hot. To the sides these intakes of sorts look really cool, these gaps here between the sides of the car and the windscreen element bother me ever so slightly, but the back of the car is the highlight of this set for me. This section that looks like nothing much, aside from a sticker collection, goes in here and tilts down. It's then tightly secured with these three elements on top to make the curved shape of the back almost seamlessly flow all the way down here. These tail lights are printed pieces and so are these air intakes and they are placed on an assembly of red pieces that matches the curves of the black assembly in a really nice way. Also, are you noticing the square exhausts here? They're actually repurposed stud shooter elements. Talk about nice part usage. Like the previous two cars, this one is also priced at $24.99 and has 261 pieces, which isn't great but also not that terrible. I've been sleeping on these Speed Champion sets for sure, as there isn't a single LEGO theme at the moment with this good of a building experience at such a small scale. The Nissan Skyline I reviewed a few weeks ago was an eye-opener for me in that regard, and the dual car set with the McLarens that I'll be reviewing soon is around the same level of ingenuity. This however doesn't apply to the Porsche honestly, which I would have to rate as my least favorite of these three cars due to a relatively plain build, not my favorite looking car ever and way too many stickers, even for Speed Champion standards. Out of the remaining two cars, having to pick a favorite was a bit harder and since I don't want to tie them together, I would place the Pagani in second place and the Ferrari in the first place. The Pagani was brilliant, but it kinda cheated for needing to use that many new elements to achieve its overall look and the back being a bit loose was the deciding factor for me. The Ferrari is slightly bigger and feels like you're getting more out of your money when you place them side by side. The back was a brilliant build, tightly secured as opposed to the Pagani and overall looks cooler to me personally. Grazie per la visione e ci vediamo al prossimo video.